Whether it's ancient combat or modern sport, winning is what it's all about. But how do you win? This man has learned the hard way. Now, he's ready to show you. This is a small and secretive group of warriors. They have no interest in glory. They take on impossible odds. Their sole object, to get the job done using any means. Special forces? No. Hollywood heroes? No. These are the ninja. They are mercenaries, assassins, infiltrators, spies, and guerrilla fighters. Their past is shrouded in mystery. Their techniques have only recently been revealed. This time on Conquest, weapons of the ninja. Question. What is a ninja? I heard they didn't really exist. A kind of samurai warrior? A type of a motorcycle? All wrong, but they'd be very pleased to hear that. They were intensely secretive. They relied on fear and rumor about their methods and techniques. But they did exist. Maybe they still do. We're going to show you some of the vast range of their weapons and teach you how to use them. And for your final challenge, you will make a ninja raid. Now, you all have martial arts experience, so you won't be surprised to hear that the first level of training is always spiritual. So, I suggest you use meditation and concentration to prepare yourselves for what is about to happen to you. The origins of the ninja are disputed, being variously placed between 500 BC and the 6th century AD. Much of their knowledge may be traced to Chinese expatriates, warriors, scholars and monks who took refuge in Japan, bringing with them the skills of China, India and Tibet. The cultural ancestors of the ninja lived as warrior mystics in the mountains of south-central Japan, far from the increasingly structured and controlled society of the capital cities. So the ninja developed as a secret, illegal counterculture to the ruling samurai elite. Hence, the deliberate concealment of their origins and the extreme secrecy of their techniques. Ninjas live in a world of lies, subterfuge and illusion. So it's essential that they have their own concept of reality. This requires great philosophical and spiritual strength and an understanding of practical psychology, which helps with the mastery of certain techniques, including hypnosis, mind control, the ability to slow the heartbeat and to keep still for hours on end. Now, these were warrior philosophers, and what may seem mystical to us was to them entirely practical. And you can't get much more practical than this. The next level of training is more physical. For this, our team members have come to a dojo, a training room. Thank you, Mark. Team, we brought you here to work with Mark Grove, an expert in ninjutsu, the ninja fighting art. He'll be teaching you how to use various weapons, starting with your own bodies. I hope you guys are ready for this. Mark teaches our team some basic skills of taijutsu, or ninja unarmed combat. These are similar to those of many martial arts. They include postures for defense and attack, rolling, leaping and tumbling, striking and kicking, grappling and choking. Now what you see is there's a lift here. Let me, let me bring you forward. If I punch forward and I hit you like this, you see how it jolts my shoulder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna act like I'm drawing a gun from my hip and I come underneath. You see this? So I scoot myself down and I drive it upward, okay? So rather than stepping forward down a, a line, easy for you to block, okay? I come here and I come apart this way, okay? This hand is gonna be here for defense. Pretty simple. For many martial artists, unarmed combat is what it's all about. For the ninja, it was just a means to an end. They had to be super fit and ready for combat in any situation, with or without weapons. This is just the start. We'll be returning to work with Mark later. 
Right, let's look at clothing. Now, the ninja had no uniform, and you're already wearing the basic black clothes that would be suitable for most operations, including those split-toe boots there, very good for climbing and for silent movement. On your hands, you'd wear these strange half-gloves. Now, these were designed to hide the intentions of the wearer while not obstructing his grip. On the head, some kind of mask. And finally, a hood. Right, here are some of your basic weapons. The next level of training is Ninja Ken with this short sword. I thought the samurai had longer swords. Right, let's get this straight. The ninja is everything. The samurai is not. The samurai was expected to fight openly according to the strict rules of honor and behavior of his high social class. He would never do anything disreputable, and he despised those who did. He also expected absolute obedience, which the ninja never gave him. Let's just look at the difference in weapons. Samurai weapons are beautifully made, elegant, sacred, reflecting the spirit of the samurai himself. Ninja weapons are just tools. They're entirely practical, often hidden or disguised. They serve multiple purposes for escape, survival, or for killing. They are undecorated, cheaply made, and had no spiritual significance whatever. The ninja sword had a short, straight blade, single-edged, with a razor-sharp point. Fighting with this weapon was at close quarters and at lightning speed. Ninja weapons required many of the same techniques as the unarmed combat, now applied to the blade. The power for each stroke does not come from the arms or wrists alone, but from the whole body, slamming through the opponent, not just striking at him. This is not fencing. Each move is designed as a totally committed killer blow. If they are incorrectly executed or skillfully avoided, they can result in the ninja being exposed to a fatal counterattack. The ninja relied on the surprise hit. Hard, fast, and final. Another skill was Yai Jutsu, the fast draw technique. Now, in a violent society, a fight could break out at a moment's notice. Now, the fast draw and immediate strike technique was also practiced by the samurai. But the ninja had an advantage with their shorter sword, which could also be drawn from a concealed position. Here. Now, the sword was actually kept in a scabbard called the sageo. Dan, would you draw your sword and come on guard against me, please? The sageo is designed so that it can hold blinding powders, even explosives. Yeah, you caught me by surprise. There is no such thing as surprise for the ninja. Remember, these are practical tools. The scabbard also has this cord, which can be used to bind your enemies or as a tripwire. The sword itself can be used to pry open doors and windows. And this part, the tsuba, can also be used as a step to help you climb. And when you're finished, you use the cord to pull the sword up after you. Most ninja weapons a multi-purpose. The next level of training is Bojutsu. Some of our team already have some knowledge of staff fighting. The bow is a long staff of about six feet. The handbow is a half staff or cane of three feet. Staves were carried by civilians as walking sticks, but in the hands of the ninja, they could be deadly weapons. <laughs> Staves and clubs are very useful for the ninja because they can be hollowed out to conceal arrows, hooks, chains, poisons, and knives. This one is a hollowed out piece of bamboo. This can be used as a breathing aid for hiding or swimming underwater. And here is a rather nice flute, except inside the flute there is a dart. And of course, with the flute, you're going to need a sheet of music. So you place the dart inside the sheet, and you roll it up tight. Place the paper inside the flute, which closes the holes. Place the dart inside, and you have a blowgun. Fighting with stick and staff is the basis of the technique for fighting with a whole range of bladed pole arms. Guys, gather around. 
You've learned some basic weapons and techniques, but what do you use them for? The tasks of the ninja, who can be male or female, divide into three. One, espionage, infiltration, gathering intelligence. Two, covert operations, sabotage, subversion, arson, assassination. Three, combat, either direct or ambush. But the emphasis is not on combat. It's on survival and success, using any means. Tactically, poison is better than combat. Assassination is better than confrontation. Just get the job done. Up to now, you've been using the standard weaponry, but the ninjas also had some extraordinary weapons which were unique to their own kind. Our team is learning some of the whole range of specialist weapons which gave the ninja their fearsome reputation. Perhaps the most famous of these is the shuriken, the throwing star. Shuriken means blade behind the hand, and it can refer to any thrown blade. But the best known are these throwing stars. They come in many different shapes and sizes. They can be concealed in pouches all over the body. Now, these are diversionary weapons. Whatever you see in the movies, these are very unlikely to be fatal. You throw them at a pursuing enemy to slow him down, or you throw them directly before your main attack with your primary weapon. Now, there are many ways of throwing. There's the underhand way. Now, this is easy to conceal, but it's a weak throw. There's the sideways throw. It's best for tracking moving targets. Throw like a frisbee. Then you have the overhand throw, much more powerful. And finally, the reverse throw which, if you can get it right, it's the most difficult throw, certainly the strongest. Now, there are also throwing spikes. Now, these can also be concealed anywhere around the body, and they can be thrown in pairs. That way, at least one of them is likely to hit and stick. You can also place a throwing spike inside the hilt of your sword so that you can throw it directly before engaging the enemy. If I saw one of these coming at me in the heat of battle, I'd have to drop what I was doing and cover myself. I can see why they're so effective. Throwing shurikens remind me of throwing knives or daggers, except there's no bulky handle to get in the way. A kama was originally an agricultural implement, but in skilled hands, it can be a fearsome and versatile weapon. <laughs> This is the Kusari Fundo, a chain weighted at both ends. It's simple, easy to conceal, and in the hands of an expert, almost invisible in action. And this is the two weapons combined, a sickle with a chain attached, the Kusari Gama. Now, this is an unusual weapon, and many opponents would have no idea what this thing is capable of. The team is having trouble working out how to use these weapons, and no wonder. Ninja were usually born into their profession. Their techniques were handed down from father to son, and were considered so secret that no capture was acceptable. Rather than surrender and reveal their secrets, wounded ninja committed suicide or were killed by their own colleagues. I used the chain, and uh, it's like it's alive. It just kept hitting me. I kept getting it tied up into my arms. Very difficult weapon to master. I used the short rope. I found it to be really difficult to actually tie people up under pressure, to be able to disarm them. I had a lot of problems with the comma. Uh, it's a very awkward weapon to me. It's working in two different directions at the same time. The comma and chain um, weapon is very awkward. I've never used one before. I found it very difficult. Very difficult. A lot of fun, but very difficult. I think if you um, get to master it, it'd be very, very effective. So we've looked at just a few of the weapons available, but there were many other areas of training involving poisons, explosives, fire, mirrors, horse riding, swimming. Because they were so often used as spies, they learned disguise and impersonation, strategy, geography, even meteorology. They would infiltrate, make an informed assessment, and then return to advise their client of how best to attack the enemy, in what area, with what force, even in what conditions of weather. 
Now, there's no way you're going to learn all that, but there are two things that you must learn. Climbing and walking. Walking? Ninja have special methods of physical movement. Some allowed rapid travel across the ridge of a roof. Some were used for stealthy and swift attack. Some when absolute silence was essential. <laughs> Now, there was a whole level of training devoted to methods of entry, concealment and escape. Climbing was essential. They had many tools to help them do it, including this grappling hook, often improvised out of three or four karmas bound together. So, gentlemen, I want you to climb this tree and disappear. The nin of ninja is a Japanese word meaning endurance and perseverance. It also means stealth and concealment. The ideogram is composed of the two ideograms for blood and heart. The techniques of the ninja, called ninjutsu, were extremely varied. Even the ability to hide and to keep absolutely still requires constant training, both mental and physical. It's time for the team to put its new skills into action. All right, guys, you're as ready as you're ever going to be. This is the plan of a compound. Inside the compound, there is a house and a pool. In that house, right here, there is a room. On the table in that room is a book. I want you to get me that book. Now, we have surrounded the whole place with guards. If they spot you, you'll have to fight them. Just get me that book. Choose your weapons, prepare yourselves. Despite their aura of mysticism and reputation for existing on a separate plane, ninja were available to the highest bidder. They gained their notoriety as special forces mercenaries during the 15th century, when Japan was divided between feuding warlords. When peace was finally restored, ninjas were hired as bodyguards, assassins, even secret police. This kind of job would be their bread and butter. This is the compound our team must infiltrate. Guards patrol all sides of the building, so the team must use cunning and stealth to gain entry. Our team members gather on a nearby hilltop and devise a plan for breaking into the compound. Phil sneaks onto the roof. His target, the guard watching the side entrance. Dan creeps in through the backyard and carefully makes his way around the swimming pool. He'll attack a guard with his blowgun, but he wants a closer shot. Meanwhile, Lee keeps watch on the front of the house. Dan uses his blowgun as an underwater breathing tube moving in for a better shot. He prepares a poison dart and fires. Taking his man down. Phil also gets ready to attack. The guard draws a knife, but Phil turns the tables and kills the guard with his own weapon. All clear at the side entrance. Phil signals Chris to enter the compound. Chris immediately finds what he's looking for. There's the book on the table. Meanwhile, Dan approaches the rear entrance and sees a guard heading straight for Chris. Chris uses a chokehold snaps the guard's neck and heads out with the book. Out front, Lee wonders what's taking so long and heads for the front door. Chris exits with the book but sees two approaching guards and flees. Phil tosses a shuriken and gets ready for battle.
Phil kills one guard, but the other one slices through his chest. Our first team member is down. Dan sees someone approaching. It's Chris, and they run off around the house. Lee doesn't see his teammates anywhere and starts to get worried, just as Dan and Chris arrive with the book. But they're soon followed by a pursuing guard. Two more guards appear. Chris takes the first one. Dan fights the second. Chris uses his karma and slices his opponent. Lee avoids a swipe to the head, but takes a fatal blow to the gut. Dan attacks with a vengeance. The last guard goes down, and Chris and Dan disappear into the darkness. Well done, team. And what does the book reveal? The way of the ninja is the way of enduring, surviving, winning. The ninja needs complete mastery of his skills, the ability to react effectively in any situation, and the absolute will to win at all costs. This is what our team has found out, as we have learned how to win with the weapons of the ninja.